It is a bittersweet day for the uh, supporters of Michelle Bachman. Maybe more bitter than really any sweet at all. Maybe that's just not the right term to use. Uh, we are expecting her to step up to that podium in Des Moines at any moment now and announce she is suspending her campaign. Um, this after she told us just yesterday that she had her tickets book, booked for South Carolina and would continue to fight on. So let's talk a little bit more about these results from the Iowa caucuses. David Drucker joins us. He's a staff writer for Roll Call. You know, a lot of people wondered why not soldier on? If you're Michelle Bachman, uh, you've got a couple of debates coming up this weekend. The opportunity for some free television exposure wouldn't really cost that much to continue on in the race and maybe pick up some support. Was that just absolutely unrealistic, David? I think it was. I think coming out of the Iowa caucuses where she was supposed to have her best chance at propelling herself into the race, I mean, don't forget, she won the straw poll back in August. It was clear that she just wasn't well received by the voters. They just weren't interested. And if you're going to soldier on, you need money. She doesn't have any. She's going to have to go deep into debt. And heading to New Hampshire, where she was clearly not going to go because she wasn't going to pick up any support. Um, it, it, going to South Carolina wasn't going to do her any good because they're greatly influenced by success and performance in Iowa and New Hampshire. South Carolinians want to elect somebody to the nomination that can act actually win the general election. Michelle Bachman hasn't proven that she can do any of that. And I think she, her and her team probably understand the position she's in, and that's why she's poised to drop out. Our Steve Brown is telling us now that it's expected to be about 10 minutes before she takes to that podium. Uh, so she's running about 15 minutes behind schedule. She was a favorite of the Tea Party movement, David. Does this suggest that the Tea Party influence is on the decline? No. I think there were a lot of candidates in the race that were able to grab the Tea Party mantle. You know, just after Michelle Bachman won that straw poll, Governor Perry got into the race. He has been a favorite of the Tea Party since the inception of the movement. And he was able to grab that from her. And basically what conservatives and Tea Party activists and people not interested in Mitt Romney have been doing is going from candidate to candidate. They loved Michelle Bachman. They weren't sure she could be president. They had somebody in Governor Perry who they thought, here's a guy that we like and could be president. He faltered. He said things that rubbed them the wrong way. They moved on to Herman Cain. He faltered. They moved on to Newt Gingrich. He faltered. They've now moved on to Rick Santorum. Yeah. And I think we've just seen this as a process. You can't lose the early states and stay in simply because there are more primaries to come. You need to show support. You need to raise money. You need to show you can win. And that's why these early contests are always very crucial. So let's talk about the winners here. And, and you've got to count Rick Santorum among them. Uh, whether he came in eight votes behind Mitt Romney or not, he effectively tied for first place. And that's a pretty stunning achievement, isn't it? He did a great job, and nobody gave him any chance in heck of uh, doing anything, myself included. Now, what we're going to have to see from Rick Santorum going forward is can he take a punch? His surge, um, he get, should get all the credit for the hard, dogged campaigning he did. He clearly connected with Iowa voters, but he was able to do so without anybody paying attention to him, without his competitors trying to really tear him down. Rick, Ta Rick Perry tried to do a little of that over the last few days of the campaign, but nobody really went after him. The question is, can he take a punch? A lot of the other candidates haven't been able to. Also, will his message translate in New Hampshire, in Florida, in other states? It probably will translate somewhat in South Carolina, but he has to perform well next week to avoid everybody referring to Iowa, the Iowa victory, as a sort of one-hit wonder. And interesting, too, the sound we just played from Mitt Romney in which he said, you know, he congratulated him. He stayed positive about Santorum. He said, but, you know, he's been working the state really hard, and I've been focusing on building a national organization. So it was kind of a backhanded compliment, you might say. David Drucker from Roll Call. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you.